Well, today, as is our tradition, Democracy Now! expands the debate. Debate moderator Lester Holt will ask Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump questions. After their responses, we stop the tape to give Dr. Jill Stein a chance to answer the same question from her own podium. We invited Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson to join us as well, but he couldn't make it. NBC News host Lester Holt, take it away. We're calling this opening segment Achieving Prosperity, and central to that is jobs. There are two economic realities in America today. There's been a record six straight years of job growth, and new census numbers show incomes have increased at a record rate after years of stagnation. However, income inequality remains significant, and nearly half of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Beginning with you, Secretary uh, Clinton, why are you a better choice than your opponent to create the kinds of jobs that will put more money into the pockets of American workers? Well, thank you, Lester, and thanks to Hofstra for hosting us. The central question in this election is really what kind of country we want to be and what kind of future we'll build together. Today is my granddaughter's second birthday, so I think about this a lot. First, we have to build an economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top. That means we need new jobs, good jobs, with rising incomes. I want us to invest in you. I want us to invest in your future. That means jobs in infrastructure, in advanced manufacturing, in innovation and technology, clean renewable energy, and small business, because most of the new jobs will come from small business. We also have to make the economy fairer. That starts with raising the national minimum wage and also guarantee, finally, equal pay for women's work. I also want to see more companies do profit sharing. If you help create the profits, you should be able to share in them, not just the executives at the top. And I want us to do more to support people who are struggling to balance family and work. I've heard from so many of you about the difficult choices you face and the stresses that you're under. So let's have paid family leave, earn sick days. Let's be sure we have affordable childcare and debt-free college. How are we going to do it? We're going to do it by having the wealthy pay their fair share and close the corporate loopholes. Finally, we tonight are on the stage together, Donald Trump and I. Uh, Donald, it's good to be with you. We're going to have a debate where we are talking about the important issues facing our country. You have to judge us. Who can shoulder the immense, awesome responsibilities of the presidency? Who can put into action the plans that will make your life better? I hope that I will be able to earn your vote on November 8th. Secretary Clinton, thank you. Mr. Trump, the same question to you. It's about putting money, more money, into the pockets of American workers. You have up to two minutes. Thank you, Lester. Um, our jobs are fleeing the country. They're going to Mexico. They're going to many other countries. You look at what China is doing to our country in terms of making our product. They're devaluing their currency, and there's nobody in our government to fight them. And we have a very good fight, and we have a winning fight because they're using our country as a piggy bank to rebuild China, and many other countries are doing the same thing. So we're losing our good jobs, so many of them. When you look at what's happening in Mexico, a friend of mine who builds plants said it's the eighth wonder of the world. They're building some of the biggest plants anywhere in the world, some of the most sophisticated, some of the best plants. With the United States, as he said, not so much. So Ford is leaving. You see that, their small car division leaving. Thousands of jobs leaving Michigan, leaving Ohio. They're all leaving, and we can't allow it to happen anymore. As far as child care is concerned and so many other things, I think Hillary and I agree on that. Uh, we probably disagree a little bit as to uh, numbers and amounts and what we're going to do, but perhaps we'll be talking about that later. But we have to stop our jobs from being stolen from us. We have to stop our companies from leaving the United States and, with it, firing all of their people. All you have to do is take a look at carrier air conditioning in uh, Indianapolis. They left, fired 1,400 people. They're going to Mexico. So many, hundreds and hundreds of companies are doing this. We cannot let it happen. Under my plan, I'll be reducing taxes tremendously 
from 35% to 15% for companies, small and big businesses. That's going to be a job creator like we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. It's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. Companies will come, they will build, they will expand, new companies will start. And I look very, very much forward to doing it. We have to renegotiate our trade deals, and we have to stop these countries from stealing our companies and our jobs. Dr. Jill Stein. So I'll start just by thanking Democracy Now! for holding a real debate, which the American people are clamoring for. Over 75 percent of Americans are saying they want an open debate. The two candidates of the establishment parties are the most disliked and untrusted in our history. So uh, we owe the American people a full debate. Um, on this question of prosperity, I think Donald Trump knows what he's talking about, about the offshoring of jobs, because, in fact, Donald Trump has offshored all of his jobs, aside from his uh, real estate, all of the products that he uh, manufactures and markets, in fact, are produced offshore. And he, in fact, has been an advocate of closing factories, moving them offshore or down south, and then moving them back, in this case, uh, to Michigan, uh, so that uh, workers' wages could be suppressed. So, indeed, he does exemplify the very problem that he is talking about. Uh, the prosperity issue uh, has really um, reached crisis proportions, because prosperity has gone to the top, not to uh, American workers who are struggling. Uh, half of Americans are basically in poverty or near poverty uh, and struggling to survive. So we need truly uh, transformative solutions. This won't be solved around the margins. My campaign is calling for a Green New Deal, uh, which is an emergency jobs program that will create 20 million good-wage, living-wage jobs as part of solving the emergency of climate change. So we, uh, we call for 100 percent clean renewable energy by 2030 in time to actually solve the climate crisis. And in doing so, we would revive the economy, turn the tide on climate change, uh, and actually improve our health so much by phasing out fossil fuels, which, in fact, kill 200,000 people every year and cause lots more illness in addition to that. But we gain so much money by saving on these needless sick care expenditures that that savings alone is enough to pay the cost of the Green New Deal. And in addition, uh, 100 percent renewable energy makes wars for oil obsolete. And we call for cutting the military budget from this bloated, uh, dangerous uh, budget, in fact, which is bankrupting us and putting our dollars into true security here at home. Hillary Clinton. I know how to really work to get new jobs and to get exports that help to create more new jobs. Right. Well, you haven't done it in 30 years or 26 years. Well, any number I, you I've been a senator, You Donald, haven't done it. You haven't I done have it. been a and secretary of state, and I have Your done Your husband signed NAFTA, which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the manufacturing your industry. That is your you opinion. go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere but certainly ever signed in this country. And now you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is, and you said, I can't win that debate. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that, and that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing will ever well, top NAFTA. That that is just not accurate. I uh, was against it once it was finally negotiated and the terms were laid out. I wrote about that in— You called it the gold I standard. About, well, I hope— You called I, it the gold standard of trade and, deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No. And then you heard what I said about it, and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the facts. The facts are, I did say, I hoped it would be a good deal, but when it was negotiated, not. which I was not responsible for, I concluded it wasn't. I wrote about that. So is it President in my Obama's fault? Is it President Obama's you fault? Even announced. Look, there Secretary, are different. Secretary, is it President there, Obama's fault? There are different, because he's pushing it. There are different views about what's good for our country, our economy, and our leadership in the world. 
And I think it's important to look at what we need to do to get the economy going again. That's why I said new jobs with rising incomes, investments, not in more tax cuts that would add five trillion dollars to the debt. But you have but no in plan. Educate. Oh, I do. Secretary, in fact, you I have, have no plan. Jill Stein. So clearly more heat than light coming out of much of the discussion in last night's debate. Um, in addition to establishing an emergency jobs program, we need to uh, do another major initiative, and that is to end the predatory student loan debt, which has basically held an entire generation uh, hostage, unable to actually participate in the economy and create a decent future for themselves. So we call for bailing out the students, as the Democrats and Republicans bailed out Wall Street after Wall Street had crashed the economy through their waste, fraud and abuse. We say it's about time to bail out the victims of that abuse. This would be the stimulus package of our dream to unleash an entire generation that is already trained. They have the skills. They have the passion and the vision. They need to be turned loose by canceling that debt. Uh, there are many ways we can pay for it. It's $1.3 trillion. We came up with $16 trillion to bail out Wall Street when they needed it. Uh, we can pay for ending student debt uh, by creating a small tax on Wall Street, for example, or by increasing the income tax on the highest uh, bracket of earners, up to, say, 60 or 65 percent. We also call for making higher education free. Uh, because, in fact, it pays for itself. For every dollar that we put into higher education, in fact, we get back seven dollars in return in improved benefits and in uh, actual increased revenues. So we simply cannot afford not to make public higher education free. Dr. Jill Stein joining Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in Democracy Now! special Expanding the Debate, based on last night's debate at Hofstra University, the first presidential debate. This is Democracy Now!, this is what democracy sounds like. Back with the debate.